I don't do spooky. I'm more than happy to play brutally difficult games that frustrate me to no end. But as soon as something scary is in the mix, I tap out. But spooky times call for spooky measures. So it only seems fitting that we play something scary for date night. In fact, the only reason I'd even think about playing this game is because I'm playing it with my boyfriend. And boy, does he know it. He can't help but mess with me in games like this. I'd kick him out of the house for the night, but I don't want to be left alone in the dark. It's safe to say we slept the lights on after Phasmophobia date night. The first time I heard the premise for this game, I thought he was joking. You're telling me that you expect me to walk into a house knowing full well it's haunted. I'm always the person yelling at the girl in the horror movie not to go into the basement. Except in this situation, I'm that girl. <laughs> it wasn't enough for him to talk me into playing something scary, but he also had to talk me into playing late at night and in the dark. I'm all for an immersive experience, but I always get skittish with anything remotely scary. The ghosts don't want us to be here. I don't want to be here. Remind me again, who wants us to be here? Oh, I found something creepy. This game just loves to keep you on edge by randomly flicking off the lights and playing eerie noises. It takes quite a bit of coaxing on his part to even get me to approach the front door. I'm for crying out loud. You let go of that rope and you come in for dinner! No! Ow! Making when we started out, we both sort of skipped over the tutorial and just dove right in. It was safe to say we didn't stand a chance and both ended up dead. It didn't help that we didn't even look into what the items we were given were used for. Half the tools at our disposal were left on the truck. It would appear that this potato is completely unremarkable. God damn it. And our mission looked more akin to people filming the Blur Witch Project than paranormal investigators at work. We found a doll. It made the ghost angry. Nice picture of a brick wall, Taryn. What the Thanks. Hell? We didn't even realize that we were on a quest for information and not trying to kill the ghost. I guess it was my mistake thinking we were ghostbusters instead of ghost hunters. It turns out all we had to do was get back in the truck and leave after snapping our pictures and collecting our evidence. But instead, we were frantically running around the house trying to kill the ghost with a hammer. Did you throw that hammer? No, did you? No. After dying a handful of times, we finally broke the immersion and looked up what we were supposed to be doing. I'm just gonna stick. sit here and I'm gonna actually just do a quick search on what even a smudge stick is. Okay. Burn smudge sticks near a ghost will prevent it from attacking for a period of time. It's going up. When a ghost is within six meters of a smudge stick while it is burning, the following will occur. Ghost activity will increase will be unable to initiate a hunt. What? Oh my god, it's really high, Nick. This period lasts. Oh shit, ten. there he it's is. Out of ten. He's out of ten. I got a picture oh of him. God, oh my god. I got a picture of him. You got a picture of him. I did die though. <laughs> Okay. I was reading the wiki. Oh my god. <laughs> Shit. We can't trust each other. It's my natural instinct that I get a little jumpy going into something when I'm already expecting it to be scary. All it takes is a creepy sound or a light flickering, and I'm ready to get back in the van and just guess what type of ghost we're dealing with. Oh my god! What's get wrong? out, get out, get out, get out. What happened? Go, 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 go. I heard what? a creepy noise. I heard the noise too, but did you see anything? It's one thing to deal with a playful specter, but I can't necessarily trust my partner in crime either. It's hard to tell if he's telling the truth when we're being haunted from all the times he's cried wolf in the past. At times, it feels like we're working against each other because I'm always suspicious that he's in league with the ghost. Taryn, I can't help but notice you don't have a reflection. <laughs> I think I might be the ghost. Are you the ghost? <laughs> Although this journal covers a plethora of different ghosts, it left out the scariest one of them all, the boyfriend ghost. Watching back our different perspectives, it's becoming more and more obvious to me that this game isn't nearly as scary as he's making it for me. Of all the times I get spooked, I can't believe how many of them are just him playing tricks. <gasps> Did you just flick on the light? What happened? The light flickered. Really? Yeah, it was scary. Ah, it's happening again! What's happening? I'm just trying to look at this voodoo doll and this light keeps flickering. It just went out. Nick, are there other lights in there? I have light down here. You're downstairs still? I'm in the cellar. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Here, I'll come back up. Oh, hi. What happened? It's all fun for him till he starts calling for help and I don't believe him. When something actually starts happening, I can't tell if it's real or not anymore and he ends up spectating the rest of the investigation from the comfort of the spirit realm. It's in the living room. It's going upstairs. It's going upstairs. It's going into a bedroom. 
Ah! I refuse to go into the house alone. The problem is that the ghosts won't show themselves if they can't catch you alone. So then it becomes a debate over who gets to wait in the safety of the truck while the other one has to go in by themselves. Obviously, he's way more capable of handling the dark, so it would make sense to just send him in. Of course, it's a hundred times funnier sending the scaredy cat in alone, so there's an argument to be made for sending me. Oh wait, it says response to people who are alone. We have to be alone in there. Oh. In okay. order for it to like talk so, with us. So who would be funnier to go in there alone, do you think? Oh. Uh... <laughs> we'll usually switch off who has to be in the house alone each time I get startled. What's totally unfair is my boyfriend will spend like 10 minutes alone in the dark, wandering around actively searching for a spirit. But then as soon as we switch places, not even 30 seconds in my shift, the doors get locked behind me and the hump begins. What happened? I just heard a, I just heard a sound. Where are you? I'm gonna check the van real quick. Do you want me to come back in? Yeah. Okay, one sec. I just took some pictures, so I just wanted to see if they have any like tags on them. What room are you in? I'm in the garage. I was in the laundry. Oh, go to the, go to the um. Oh no, it dropped. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What's wrong? It's talking. Oh my god! Holy shit. What happened? In theory, one of the ways to survive a ghost hunt is to hide from the angry ghost. That means I gotta run into a room, close the door, and hide in a corner. I feel like a child who had to turn off the lights downstairs and make the mad dash to the safety of their bedroom covers. If I can't see them, they can't see me. And since there are no covers to be had in Phasmophobia, I guess this nice wall will suffice. Um, the light just went out. Do you want to use the- We need to whisper because they can hear us. Let's the ghost talk. We'd be more than happy to go into every house with the zero intention of making it out alive, but dying cuts your reward money in half, and you need that in order to buy new tools. When we were still figuring out what everything did, we weren't really as incentivized to earn money. But once we figured out how to actually play the game, we changed up our strategy pretty quick. The group has a sanity level, and lowering the average is a way to score more cash for an investigation. The system was clearly designed to put the girlfriend on blast, because I'm always the reason we aren't low enough on sanity. It's messed up because the measures are a really poor indicator of our real life sanity. I'm usually the one freaking out for him when things get scary, so it's kind of bogus that he complains about losing money since I'm not scared enough. Instruction. Oh Jesus oh, Christ! Oh, it's just a painting. <sighs> Some of these ghosts are total trolls, and I'm more annoyed than scared of them. Setting off the car alarm not two minutes into the investigation was a real low blow. I still don't know if there was a way to turn it back off, but at least the constant honking in my ear drowned out the sounds of the ghost turning on and off the shower head and strumming the guitar in the other room. <gasps> the hell? How do we turn this on? Oh god, are we gonna be stuck with this stupid horn? I think the ghost might have set off the car. Oh, you do? <laughs> what makes you think that? Nobody react to what I'm about to tell you. I think that kid might be the Avatar. For every five things I get a jump out of me, there's like one thing that gets him going. This kid's room. Oh, Jesus Christ! Did it kill you? Did it get you? No, it didn't get me, but I saw it. Some of his loudest scares were actually just me accidentally sneaking up on him. What the hell? Do you see this? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's refrain from hugging. At some point, the game devolves from something cooperative into something more competitive, as we keep trying to mess with the other person instead of actually cracking the case. He'll close doors behind me, and I'll leave the house without telling him. It becomes a challenge of trying to get the other person killed before leaving. I have to imagine, at some point, the ghost is just watching the two of us from the spirit realm and just scratching his head. I hope he appreciates the night off. Anyways, as the saying goes, it's more afraid of you than you are of it. And in this case, I think we're doing a great job scaring each other each other more than a ghost ever could anyways. Ow!